Welcome back to the Spizzalock. This intro is driving me insane, so I'm just gonna put the wheels up here while I yap. I'm super excited to get out of the Gen 4 games, as although Heart Gold, Soul Silver, and Platinum are phenomenal, Diamond and Pearl are, uh. I didn't even ask for direction! Oh, shut up! I stepped on a ditto! Disgusting! Obnoxious, to say the least. This episode definitely had its twists, and in my opinion, had the funniest Elite Four of any Spizzalock leg, so make sure to watch until the end as we close off Saga 4, leg 17. Pokemon Pearl. I hope you enjoy. I started the journey, got the Chimchar, did the thing, and since I knew his ass was not coming with us, I gave him the first name that came to mind before banishing him to the box. We watch our rival catch an Electrode and pick up our five Pokemon who survived last leg. Azure the second, Snonic the second, Hera the fourth, Jack the fourth, and Slicer X the sixteenth. I go through early game unable to catch anything due to using pretty much all early game Pokemon, and most routes in general. So while we go through all that, I wanted to touch on a question I've been asked a lot. What will I do when I get to the Dexit games, since some Pokemon simply can't be transferred over? And although I've already answered this in my Q&A, that's a 20 minute yap session from some white boy you literally know nothing about, so I understand. So I'm gonna answer it here. That way, next person who asks, I'll just direct them here. Solution one is that I just use mods, and if the mod doesn't exist, I pay someone to make the mod. It would cost me a pretty penny, but I really do care about this challenge, and also I'd only need them to mod in like six Pokemon tops, you know? And luckily with the DLCs, I fucking hate DLCs. Most Pokemon are available anyway, so I should be fine if I'm lucky. Plan B though is a holdover system. Let's say Slicer X isn't available in Scarlet and Violet, because he isn't, but he is available in the Gen 10 games. After Sword and Shield and BDSP, I'd play Gen 9 without him, but then bring him back with me to the Gen 10 games. Even if I have six survivors, come with me to gen 10. It's different from the allies box because well I don't really have a say in the matter so yeah those are my two solutions. Upon reaching Rorik I realized I had no good way to deal with his menacing Cranidos except maybe Slicer X but if I bet wrong here it would cost me the run. So scouring all routes in the game I found a single encounter I could get at this point. Backtracking all the way to Jubilife, I discovered there was a 2% encounter to find a Psyduck in Ravaged Path. So after catching this cutie patootie and naming him Quartz after my late best friend, we head back on over and easily acquire our first badge. You may be asking why didn't I use Chimchar to handle the early gyms considering my lack of other options, and my answer to that is... Starter Pokemon are really good, and I only have two left to choose from, and considering how dead everything is now, I'm gonna need something to help me get through Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl down the road. With our newfound team of six, we touch down on Floroma, kick Mars in the bars, and head to the magical forest of no encounters. Well, there was a Misdreavus, but it was only at nighttime, and to be quite honest, we just didn't need it. Gardenia is up, and Azure used her blue flame to decimate her poor grass types, winning us badge number two. We then go to the next area where we could get an encounter, being the same route we found Azure. And we didn't have a Pokemon the new cut. So in my frustration, I decided to go to the Grand Underground to pick up a fossil, and... We have an Explorer kit, so I don't know, maybe we can pick up a quick fossil. Cause you know, maybe it was just crashing in diamond cause it sucks. Yeah, it crashed. Genuinely, I don't know why it doesn't work on diamond or pearl, but whatever. I didn't want a fossil anyway. Hera handles pretty much any and every trainer we come across, and we finally meet our next encounter, Arid the Bonsly. We do our usual game corner pillaging, and this time we went extra hard because this would be the last time it's available to us. When in Rome. It was time for Maylene, and instead of silly things like strategy and type advantages, we just tore up the place with Hera. Jack and Slicer X get kicked off the team once again until they get themselves to a proper level and we add Arid to the team, who we evolve into Sudo Wudo. Since we were so low on encounters, I was getting desperate. So desperate in fact, chat tried to convince me to hack in the honey tree encounters I haven't gotten yet. Since there are two more encounters I could get, and I had the locations to do so, I just didn't want to repeatedly wait 8 whole hours until I could check for encounters. And so, with enough pestering, their logic finally broke through my 8-inch skull and I introduced them to Doom the Cherubi and... Taika the male combi. Awesome. Am I just gonna have to sug it out with male combi? No, bro. We're gonna make it work. Okay, we're gonna make it work. We're gonna have to make it work because we don't have any choice, but we're gonna make it work. And so I decided to get them up to speed and level, and uh, this happened. It's gonna be kind of a fodder mon, I guess, but it'll live. Wait, what? 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 This game is busted, dude. This game is so busted. How did you evolve? You're a boy. You turned into what? Rand's Vespa Queen confirmed? Whatever. I'm not going to question it. So, uh, yeah, I have no clue why that happened. Poke geniuses in the comments, please help me out. 
France Pokemon before GTA 6. As a staunch ally, I decided to keep Taika on the team and I evolved Doom. It's time for Crash or Wake and I send out Taika, who has a pretty solid moveset for stall. We get swaggered turn 1 and hit herself. After a Dragon Rage, we push through Confusion, but she misses Toxic. I decide to go for a heal order, D-Rage lands, and she fails again, killing herself. Rip Taika, you would have loved GTA 6. After a struggle, Arid managed to pick up a KO on Gyarados, and the Quagmaster is out. We go to Doom and Oko with Grass Knot. Floatzel is on the field, and we give him our seed. We then go to Quartz out of Fear of Ice Fang and spam Water Pulse until we finally take it out. Badge 4 acquired. We try and chase down a Grump, but get interrupted by our obnoxious rival and have to engage in fisticuffs. Arid Mollywop Starly and lays his wood on Primplup, almost dying in the process. Azure takes down Roselia and Wallace Ponytail with her ability Flash Fire, easily winning the battle. The chase with the Grunt doesn't really lead anywhere, so we lobotomize some wild Pokemon and make our way to Fantina, where we evolve Quartz into Golduck. Despite only taking one Gust and getting Drift Blim to burn through heals on Red, I realize I misplayed here as Hera would have been better off sweeping Fantina's other Pokemon. So to try and rebuild some momentum, I switch out to Arid to finish things off and then to Doom for Miss Magius. We get Seed, take a chunk of damage, and heal Hera. We go to Snonic and then Oko. Gengar's out, I decide to take a risk in Oko. Batch 5 down. Next, we made it to Byron, where I could finally show off Doom's true power. For the most part. However, I lead with Sonic, and I had forgotten Faint Attack for Beat Up and quickly learned how Bun's dookie ass the move is, effectively making my Sneasel useless. So I go to Doom. We set up Leech Seed and get put to sleep. However, Bronzor's damage output is so pitiful, by the time we wake up, Leech Seed had done most of its HP. We set up Sunny Day, activating our ability Flower Gift, which gives us and our allies a boost in our attack and special defense stats. The downside is, I have no allies out. And, uh, Cherim is not known for attack, so this is really just for some bulk and, more importantly, aesthetic. After a long, tedious exchange, we KO Bronzor but lose our sunlight in the process. I leech seed Steelix and set back up. The final part of Doom's plan was to land Solar Beams, but we didn't have that move just yet, and Steelix was stomping us pretty hard, so we go to Quartz, who easily handles the rest of the match. Phew, almost lost some of my audience there. Nobody wants to see all that anyway. We prepare for Candace by leveling up and evolving Azure, as well as adding Jack back and unlocking Ambipom. We begin the battle and immediately fire blast her first three Pokemon, then go to Golduck, who I thought would cancel out her hail, but it turns out Cloud9 just made me immune to chip damage. A Force Palm does about a third of Quartz's health and paralyzes us. I stall out one more turn and go to Hera. I heal on next turn, which pays off as Metacham uses Detect. I go with Aerial Ace, to my surprise nearly one-shotting. A couple more aerial aces and we win our 7th badge. The reason I'm not a huge fan of Diamond or Pearl is simply because the gym leaders just aren't as good as Platinums and the story is obviously a little more lacking. So it feels a lot more boring to me in both aspects. Alright, Cyrus. This wouldn't be the last time we face him, but by god am I ready to move on to some new games. After Azure and Hera handle the grunts, we join Barry for a double battle. While we're handling that though, I'd like to ask that if you're still watching, please consider subscribing. I am so close to 1000 subs and it would mean the world to me. I mean, if you're watching this far into the video, you clearly enjoyed it somewhat. And the truth is only about half of the people who watch my Spizzlelock videos are actually subscribed. Hell, and that's just for Spizzlelock. Over 95% of the people who watch my NX Minutes video series aren't subscribed either, so don't be that guy. It's completely free and I'd really appreciate it. We tee up against Cyrus and I set up a double nasty plot into a T-Bolt, one shouting Honchkrow. Weavile comes out and since my dumbass didn't set agility, we have to switch and go to Hera who hits it for the four times. Crobat's up and I send out Quartz who gets flinched in, only gets a single hit off. I go to Arid who finishes things, taking confusion in the process, and Gyarados comes out, who lands an EQ and Arid hits himself, dying. Why do my Pokemon keep killing themselves? Just move! Jack comes out and gives Gyarados a controlled shock. Tired of having to catch all these legends like I'm the fucking SCP Foundation, I decide to go for a different approach this time. Palkia joins Moltres on Worldstar and we make our way to the final gym leader, starting things off with a classic Jack setup. We nasty plot, but Brick Break does too much damage to finish the setup, so we baton pass straight to our speedy Azure, who immediately loses all our health to Brick Break. This was a problem, because even though we had Wide Lens, if we missed a single attack, we would lose her, and our healing item wouldn't be enough to stop Raichu from just 
using Brick Break again, so we had to change plans. Going to Hera who gets crit by a charge beam. We almost Oko with Brick Break and activate our Guts ability. Raichu heals up, but we Oko with our Zenkai boost. We stop Volkner from stealing our flow and then switch to Doom, who seeds, suns, and solar beams her way through paralysis as we pick up the KO. Octillery is out last. And although I want to heal, this thing has good offensive stats and even better coverage, so I risk it, survive an Aurora Beam, and set Leech Seed. We switch to Quartz, heal Hera, and then go to her for a crit Oko close combat winning us our final Gen 4 badge. Ew. This episode's so fast it's giving me whiplash. We put Slicer X back on the team, now a fully evolved Kabutops, and despite the general ease with Victory Road, we do have one death in Quartz. This one definitely made me really sad, but I kinda knew it was bound to happen. He was a mid to high tier, pure water type, and with how many precious teammates I had, he was unfortunately the weakest link. The fodder, if I had to choose. But he died so my other members could live, and I respect that. We set up for the Elite Four, evolving Sonic into Weavile, putting items on our squad, and tweaking movesets. And then, with great haste, we barrel on into the Elite Four to face our final Gen 4 gauntlet. Knowing Dustox would set screens, we do an agility double nasty plop a tom pass into Az- Oh my god, none of those words are in the Bible. <clears throat> into Azure, who gets her special defense dropped. Although all of our attacking moves have 85 accuracy, we had a wide lens to boost our odds. We one-shot Dustox, and I immediately blunder and use Bounce in order to save a Fire Blast for Drapion. But this was a horrible idea as Vespaquin brushed it off and almost killed us with a power gem. And now if my next attack missed, Azure would die. So I effectively just walled myself from four free KOs. Slicer X comes out to finish the job and Eren's scariest Pokemon, Heracross, hits the field. In my opinion, it's scarier than Drapion just due to the amount of coverage it has. I go to Doom to set Leech Seed, but Heracross is doing crazy damage. However, we need to try, so I push forward and send this poor flower to her demise. Sorry, Doom. Oh, close combat. Okay. Live! Dude, thank you, thank you, thank you, Doom. Land, land. I was so scared. I was so scared. I was so scared. Okay, okay, switch, switch, switch. Doom pulls through, and we're back in this. We go to our own Heracross, and after a clash, we come out on top. However, it switches out before we can get the KO and goes to Beautyfly. I use my healing item on Azure, as we luckily don't get hit by Gust. We fire blast his Beetle and Butterfly, and then his Mock Scorpion is here. I go to Slicer X with neither side doing much damage, but he was only using X Scissor, and I was scared of potentially other moves one-shotting. I go to Azure, but miss a Fire Blast. Sonic gets dog-walked, and things are starting to look really, really bad. I was really starting to regret using Bounce earlier. I go back to Hera, and Cross Poison fails to activate Guts. I go for a Brick Break, but Aerial Ace hits us and... kills Hera. Slicer X sees this and comes out, landing blow after blow, and before we knew it, the battle was over. We lost Hera. It was my fault. There was so much more I could have done better. Not using Bounce, trusting Slicer X more. But it was behind us now. And I was much, much more terrified for the rest of the battles. Hera had carried us all four games that had been with us. Handling most trainers, evil bad guys, and hell, sweeping more gym leaders than I can remember. He single-handedly took down Cynthia once, dude. Like, I, like, come on. And now we had to figure out a way to win without her. I leave with Doom against Bertha and set Sunny Day while Quagsire protects. I one-shot Quagsire and Sudo Widow with Solar Beam. Papoudon comes out, changing the weather and powering us down. I set Leech Seed and decide to go for another Sunny Day. But Stone Edge crits us out, killing Doom. What I thought would be an easy battle now turned difficult. Well, not really. Slicer X actually handled the entire rest of her team with relative ease, but still. We were down to four members, and one of them couldn't even really do damage. I decided since there wouldn't be any more Gyarados around, I would ditch T-Bolt on Jack, and changed his moveset to a more offensive one. Teaching him return for damage and replacing Nasty Plot and Agility, since most of our team was fast and didn't really use special attack. Those moves were replaced with Toxic and Double Team. That way, we could do damage, toxic our opponents, and not only stack evasion, but when we get low, just pass that evasion to somebody else. We kick the battle off with Flint by landing toxic, and setting not one, not two, but six double teams. We then pass it all to Slicer X, who handles Rapidash, and Fernape somehow lands EQ, but we Oko in return. Drift blooms out, so we heal up, use Ancient Power, and Flint goes to Steelix, who can't land a single hit as we spam Waterfall. We use our last Ancient Power on Drift Blim, and we run into a problem. Mudshot? Real. Uh, we are worse for wear. Do we have any PP ups? We managed to scrape by by spamming Aqua Jet until KO, and realization then strikes me. Do we have any PP ups? Do we have any Lepa Berries? This is gonna be a long. This is this is 
This is gonna be a long stream tonight. I I have a few. This is <laughs> no no no. I have no way to restore no bro's power points. No. It's an HM. I can't even remove waterfall. What the fuck, man? No. I have ethers. Thankfully, chat pointed out we had a couple of elixirs, so although we had to be sparing, we had enough PP to get us through the rest of the battles. Lucian leads with Mr. Mime, so we of course Toxic and set Max Evasion, and this time pass it to Snonic. We set Swords Dance and Oko Mr. Mime, and then proceed to crash out on Metacham. Do not tell me Metacham. If Metacham outspeeds genuinely chat, I don't think you want to know what I do on stream. I, I don't think you want to know how, what I do to get myself banned on this platform if Metacham outspeeds Weavile. If you do not one shot Snonic, the run, the run is dead. Do you understand me, bro? If you get touched, tickled, fondled, groped, horn hosled, it's over. I need you to come in with the velocity and quickness. Yes! Yes! What are you doing? Oh, okay, okay. 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 Yes! Let's go! We had made it to Cynthia. We had four fighters left. Our PP was a little weak. Pause. But we had one thing she didn't. Evasion hacks. Grew level 66, go to level 70. I want this over. Cynthia! Your days of touching me are over most hype pokemon music 2024 no virus pokemon hype mix battle music oh it has a talicized title you know it's hype it, no 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 one okay two three four Five, six. Now we're gonna toxic stall this thing because it has no weakness. Okay, shit, it full restored. Whatever. Swords dance. We're gonna swords dance again. Night slash. Easy. I'm pretty sure it fucking quad resists dark. And it will one shot Snonic. You have to do it, buddy. Okay, Miss Dragon Pulse. Come on. Three hit KO. We got that. Gastrodon. We got that. Dark Chomp. Ice Beam. No. Oh my god. Ice Shard one shots. I'm such a fool. Two more Pokemon. One shot. Ice Shard. Yes! 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 It's over! It's over! Gen 4 is over, chat! Let's play victory music, guys. This is probably gonna get my stream taken down, but let's play victory music. I don't care. We made a chat. This is for all of you. I don't give a shit if this gets me taken down. I don't care. I don't care. I fucking, I fucking beat my made-up Pokemon challenge. I don't care, bro. At a huge cost, we made it to the finish line. Gen 4 was over. And now, we can play the same game four times in a row. And it will be peak. Honestly, looking over the death box, I'd say we did pretty well compared to previous legs. Not just in number, but in the Pokemon themselves. We lost a Vespaquin, a Pseudo Widow, a Golduck, a Cherim, and a Heracross. Outside Heracross, these other deaths were not too detrimental. Thanks for watching. It's been a fun journey, and I'll see you all in Unova. Comment below what Pokemon you want named after you, or, you know, just named in general. You can name, you can name them whatever. Uh, first come, first serve. Uh, bye.